the purpose of this series is to talk about acrylic mediums and I thought I would start off with one of my favorites which is the light molding paste. Now light molding paste is a very light material in comparison to the heavy molding paste and it's very easy to work with and I happen to like it for textural reasons. I can knife it on, I can play all kinds of games with it, but I think the best thing that I've done with it recently is use it with stencils. And uh, I have a stencil that I've cut, and this is just a very simple stencil of circles. And what is really nice about it is it doesn't have a lot of um, weight, particularly when using it on canvas. And I think that's very important that you don't over overweigh a canvas down. Um, it has a very nice texture, very light consistency, uh, very white, and is just a very nice material to work with. And when I use it with a stencil, I just basically hold the stencil down and take the material and just scrape it over the surface. Now those of you that know my work at all will understand that uh, this is a very common thing for me to do. And I can color this if I so desire, but I can also use it as a textural visual element that I can highlight, that I can color or stain, um, that I can manipulate in a lot of different ways. Um, now this is a relatively thin stencil, but that doesn't mean that it's not going to show up. So take your time. You have plenty of time to do this. The only thing you want to be very careful of, or at least the only thing I try to be careful of, is that the stencil doesn't move around a lot uh, in this process. So, uh, it's very simple. And I can leave as much or as little texture as I like on here. Um, and you'll, you'll see that I've left a little bit of texture. But then I'm going to carefully lift this off and clean this up. Get rid of some of the excess. And see if I can show those circles. Yeah, there they are. You can see those quite clearly, I think. And I am going to allow this to dry. And then we're going to move on to other materials. And see if we can uh, have a little bit of fun. One of the things that I keep on hand in my studio at all times is distilled water and I put it into a basically a ketchup bottle and I've opened the top just a little bit more than normal and I like to have distilled water because all the minerals have been virtually removed out of it. I will keep a small container of that water on my table. The other thing I keep in the studio quite frequently is a bottle of flow enhancer. Now it comes in a concentrated form in this kind of bottle and it's called Flow Aid or Flow Enhancer, whatever you want to call it. Its directions say to mix it one part Flow Enhancer to 20 parts distilled water. So what I've done on my bottle is I've marked the side with little dots and I will fill it up to the top, next to the top dot with distilled water and then I fill up to the top dot with the Flow Enhancer. Make sure that I shake it well to get it well blended. From there I can use it in a water container like this, although this one is just distilled water. The other thing I can do is I can put it into a spray bottle like this. And again, I've marked it as a flow to aid mix so I know what it's doing. Now, I'm going to do a little bit of a setup here. And I'm my surface is dry here and this, the um, light molding paste has dried thoroughly. It's had several hours to dry. What I like most about the, the, the light molding paste is it's very uh, supple and um, uh, can not break easily. And because of that, I think it's perfect for using on canvas where you have a lot of movement all the time. Um, I'm, I prefer liquid acrylics, but you can do this with any acrylic. And I'm just going to experiment here with a couple different colors and I have a plastic palette under the work and since this is such a small canvas I am not going to be using a whole lot of, of pigment 
So I'm just going to set my pigments up uh, along the edge of the palette. And you note that I'm just using very, very small quantities of, of this material. And I'm going to take my brush, make sure that it's thoroughly wet, and I do keep paper towels right over here alongside, and I'm just going to take the excess out. Now, the one thing I want to do is take my flow enhancer, and I'm going to uh, spray the surface of this canvas with the flow enhancer. And then I'm going to take a paper towel, get off any excess, and then just ever so lightly spray it again. So I've taken my brush that I've already wet, drying it just a little bit, and I'm going to grab a little bit of my uh, color and you'll notice how it starts to run over the surface making it more like a watercolor and by tipping the surface up I can actually get it to run if I need to I can always add a little bit more flow enhancer and as you'll see as soon as it hits that it starts moving it around and notice how it kind of gathers around some of these forms that's what that's sort of what I'm looking for out of all of this so I'm going to come back in with my second color and see how it's starting to blend together this is the whole effect that I've been looking for um, just like you do in watercolors I can leave areas open um, just playing with this stuff and notice I'm not afraid to dilute this a little bit more if I need to picking up some more of the uh, colors. The colors I'm using here are the quinacridone colors and uh, I'm, I'm experimenting a little bit with a color combination here where I, I'm going to play all of this against a deep diox purple and we're going to see how this works out. Uh, nice. Now, experimenting with this stuff a little bit, I can make it move around a little and really start having some fun with it. I'm make sure I get my uh, brush into a very, very wet um, paper towel so that it doesn't dry out. And I'm just going to watch this for a little bit and see how it blends and molds. Now I'm not afraid to leave these white areas. I rather like those white areas. They, they become very important to me in some of my work. Um, what I'm trying to watch here very closely is the, um, the movement of the colors. Now I, I'm going to take a secondary sprayer and fill it with distilled water and see if I can add just a little bit more distilled water to this mixture. Yeah, see there it goes. And part of that movement is based on the fact that I'm using the distilled water, but part of it is based on the fact that I have a good base of the flow enhancer already in place. So this is the way I work with some of these uh, mediums, and I think you'll see where it can be very useful for certain techniques. So this is a start. This is where we're going to start today. So any questions, give me a call or send me a private message, and uh, we'll go from there. Thank you.